Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, we'll be talking about viral fevers. Viral fevers can present in different clinical forms, their clinical features, causative agents, different viruses causing the diseases, disease burden as such, pathogenesis of these diseases, their features and how we diagnose these cases. Okay, so we'll go into the different viruses. Now there are different clinical syndromes caused by viruses. They could either cause febrile illness alone or febrile illness with rash or febrile illness with rash and arthralgia. There could be some which cause encephalitis along with febrile illness. There could be some which are causing hemorrhagic fevers. And there are others which cause certain characteristic systemic diseases like yellow fever. You know, it's a different kind of fever which is produced. So, mostly their clinical features, they present, they have incubation period of 4 to 21 days. They might have a sudden onset. Patients present with headache, nausea, vomiting. Arthralgia may be present, fever associated with hemorrhagic phase might be present and may present with encephalitis or maybe um, hemorrhages. As far as pathogenesis is concerned, usually viruses enter the body through an insect vector, bites and then it multiplies in the reticular endothelial system leading on to viremium. The transmission by the bite of the female mosquito leads to virus being present under the skin which multiplies in the vascular endothelium blood monocytes, macrophages in lymph, lymph nodes, bone marrow, spleen, liver, etc. And this progresses to involve more organs, finally leading on to rash, arthritis, hepatitis, nephritis or encephalitis. Now, what actually happens is when there is a swelling of capillaries and perivascular edema, the, that is what is responsible for the skin rash. Thrombocytopenia occurs which leads on to hemorrhages. In some cases, the virus is transmitted to, tra to target organs. Like if it is transmitted to CNS, it may cause encephalitis, capillary endothelium, in, so it may cause hemorrhagic fever or it may go on to liver to cause yellow fever. So this is how the disease, uh, the viruses, they cause the viral fevers along with rashes or arthralgia, etc. As far as lab diagnosis of these arboviral infections is concerned, one needs to collect either a blood sample, CSF or a brain tissue. Blood sample when the patient is viremic that is having fever in the acute phase. CSF when a patient is having encephalitis and brain tissue usually it is post-mortem only if a patient has not been able to be um, treated properly. Further what one can do is one can either do viral isolation which is done either in suckling mice or tissue culture or one could look for antibody formation specific IgM within the first few days or you may if you have IgG detection then you need to show a fourfold rise of antibody detection, IgG detection by ELISA, CFT, HAI or neutralization test. Virus isolation, it can be done in suckling mice, intracerebrular inoculation is done and the animal develops fatal encephalitis. This is the most sensitive uh, method of isolation of arboviruses. You could also do virus isolation in cell culture which could be vero cell line, BHK2, 21 cell line, mosquito cell lines and the, after the growth after the inoculation in these cell lines, the virus grows. Then the growth of the virus in these cell lines can be detected either by immunofluorescent assay, hemagglutination inhibition assay, complement fixation, ELISA or neutralization test. That is how you detect the presence of virus in the uh, cell lines. Further, you can also isolate the virus from the insect vectors or the reservoir animals. To, this is to know and identify the arboviruses which are uh, prevalent in the area and their epidemiological importance as to whether they are causing disease in that area or not. Serology, that is you can look for presence of antibodies by any of these tests. To identify recent infection, one would look for IgM antibodies, specific antibodies which will appear within 1 to 3 days. While uh, to the, if you, one is wanting to detect after 2-3 weeks, one should do, uh, do a detection of fourfold rise or more in antibody titer which is usually IgG antibody by any of these methods again which is a strong evidence of recent infection that is when you show a fourfold rise, not otherwise. So any of these tests, hemagglutination or inhibition, they can be done. 
now on the febrile diseases when we want to um, tell you which are the ones which are caused by arboviruses the according to the family and genus i'll be telling you toga viridi family which has an alpha virus genus this is mosquito bone that is the spread is through the mosquitoes this can cause a febrile illness which is chikungunya which can be plain febrile illness or with hemorrhagic fever again it can be chikungunya can present both ways o neong neong fever semliki forest fever sinbis fever or ross river virus they are all transmitted through the toga viridi alpha virus uh, genus the flavi viridi is another family which which has got a flavi virus genus which is again mosquito bone that can cause illnesses like dengue which can be types 1 to 2 four then the same can be hemorrhagic fever can be dengue can be present as hemorrhagic fever again or it can produce a west nile uh, disease which is a febrile illness or it can produce another uh, important hemorrhagic fever which is known as yellow fever flavi viridi flavi virus genus uh, can also produce diseases which are tick borne that is the vector is a tick in this case the disease is kasnofur virus disease and omsk hemorrhagic fever which are both hemorrhagic fevers which are produced by these viruses bunya viridi family bunya virus which is mosquito borne produces chitor virus which is a febrile illness flebo virus which is again mosquito borne produces sandfly fever or rift valley fever nairo virus which is tick borne produces nairo sheep disease or ganjams virus while rio viridi family orbi virus genus which is again tick borne that is the vector is the tick produces cholera or tick borne virus which is a febrile illness rhabdoviridi family which is a vesicular vesicular virus genus mosquito borne as well as sandfly borne produces ves vesicular stomatitis virus or chandipura virus which are both febrile illnesses so this was the list of the febrile illnesses which is produced by arboviruses they could be either plain febrile or with hemorrhagic fevers so we'll go on individually to different uh, fevers which are there or viruses producing these diseases yellow fever is one systemic illness which is produced by the virus and it is uh, the vector in this case is edes aegypti it is a mosquito borne acute febrile illness it occurs in tropical africa and uh, latin america it is not reported from asia including india disease typically has two cycles urban cycle and sylvatic cycle urban cycle involves man and it is through aids while the sylvatic cycle could be in monkeys and it is through hemogogous uh, species pathogenesis the virus replicates in the kufur cells in the liver which produces massive necrosis of hepatocytes leading on to jaundice and decreased prothrombin of these patients incubation period can be 3 to 6 days patient presents with fever chills headache myalgia backache vomiting he can have severe jaundice he can have hematemesis and he can also have melina that is passes uh, blood uh, along with stools Pl pulse would be slow because he is having so much hemorrhages bp is low he can go on to albuminuria oliguria any area that is the kidney shutdown can occur death can occur in 20 to 50 percent cases within 6 to 7 days due to either hepatic or renal failure now as far as prophylaxis or prevention of this disease is concerned a very important vaccine is there yellow fever vaccine or 17d vaccine which is produced by passaging the scb strain serially in mouse embryo and chick embryos it is a live attenuated vaccine which is given subcutaneously it is can give protection for up till 10 years vaccination is mandatory for travel to or from endemic areas in, and is valid for 10 years beginning from the 10 days after administration of the vaccine in india 17d vaccine is produced manufactured at cri kosoli another way of controlling the disease is by doing mosquito control yellow fever why does it not occur in india though we have edes aegypti in india which are responsible which are abundant still we are not having yellow fever in india why because uh, one is that strict vigilance on vaccination quarantine for travelers to endemic areas might be helping also the prevalence of the dengue virus in the edes aegypti checks the establishment of the stray virus of the yellow fever in the vectors so there is enough presence of any, uh, the dengue fever virus in these uh, mosquitoes which checks the presence of yellow fever virus in many of them dengue on the other hand is produced by four serotypes dengue 1 2 3 and 4 again the vector is edes aegypti it's got reservoirs it can occur uh, in reservoirs like monkey man mosquito geographical distribution it is tropical as well as subtropical areas tropical as well as subtropical areas where it can grow 
immunity is type specific that is if you get infection with type 1 you will have immunity against type 1. So, it is type specific, but cross reactivity can occur between serotypes, but no cross uh, immunity. I mean dengue virus is mostly seen in Southeast Asian countries including India, experience repeated, we have been experiencing repeated epidemics of dengue caused by all four viruses, most cases occur between June and November. In some outbreaks up to 25 percent may develop hemorrhagic fever. Most epidemics occur in urban areas and villages where the Aedes aegypti is abundant, but not in rural environments. Clinically, it affects older children and adults, incubation period can be 5 to 8 days, can last up to 10 days. Two forms of dengue fever are seen, classical dengue fever and dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. Dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome usually occurs with a different serotype. See, you had infection with one serotype, uh, it, you might have had a normal dengue fever. Next time you get infection with another serotype, you might present with dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. Classical dengue fever is relatively benign to start with, fever of sudden onwards typically biphasic, saddleback fever, there can be headache, retrobulbar pain, conjunctival injection, pain in back and joints also called break bone fever, lymphadenopathy, there can be maculopapular rash on third or fourth day, trunk usually spreads to later to face and the extremities, there can be petechiae and the febrile illness lasts for about 10 days after which recovery is generally complete and the patient is and it is a non-fatal course. So, patient has febrile illness that is he has sudden onset fever, headache, mouth, nose, he might have a muscle joint pains, vomiting, rash, diarrhea, etc. But the warning signs could be if there is a worsening of abdominal pain, if vomiting is ongoing, liver enlargement is there, mucosal bleeding starts or there is a high hematocrit with low platelet counts, lethargy or restlessness serosal effusions if they are there, these are all warning signs that he is going into a difficult phase or a critical phase. That is he can have hypertension, pleural effusion due to sinuses uh, due to the serosal effusion, ascites can occur, GI bleeding can occur. But usually if a patient is recovering, he'll, he might have altered level of consciousness, seizures, itching, slow heart rate, you know, it might appear like a recovery phase, but that is the time when these uh, critical uh, illness might be having its uh, effects. That is the patient is having slow heart rate that is he has had bled so much or is you know consciousness is getting disturbed. So, one has to be on the lookout for these warning simple, uh, some symptoms. Now, dengue hemorrhagic fever shock syndrome usually seen in pre-infection in most patients that is patient had a prior infection with one or different type of serotype. Later it has a develop, so it causes which causes the development of lower levels of neutralizing antibodies and high levels of non-neutralizing antibodies after infection with a certain serotype. So, there can be formation of antibody complexes within a few days of second dengue virus infection. First dengue virus infection produces antibody formation. Second dengue virus infection immediately there can be antibody complexes. Also the preformed antibody causes partial neutralization and opsonization, promotes efficient binding and entry of the virus into the cell which accelerates the process called the DHF. <coughs> this occurs, this can occur in 6 to 9 months in a patient because the maternally acquired bodies are lost by then. So, in children it can occur at the age of 6 to 9 months, at 5 to 10 years. Live attenuative vaccine for this is under development. So, basically like we understood classical fever can occur with any one type and this if you get another serotype you might go on for DHF due to these reasons. Why? Because the phenomenon of the antibody dependent enhancement that occurred that results in increase in viral entry and replication of higher number of mononuclear cells, which leads to release of cytokines, vasoactive mediators and few coagulants, which can lead on to disseminated intervascular coagulation seen in these patients of dengue hemorrhagic fever. So, the antibody dependent enhancement can lead on to all this phenomenon, which can lead on to uh, further in, uh, in DIC and uh, leading on to fatality in many patients. For lab diagnosis, one needs to do a viral antigen detection NS1 in the first week of illness or you could do look for a specific antibody IgM by strip immunochromatographic test or ELISA test. IgM antibody detection can be done in the first week or you could do IgG antibody demonstrated in paired sera. Like I told you fourfold rise has to be shown, you know, so you can see IgG. Now, what happens is viremia is here in the first week, NS1 it can be detected, antigen data can be detected in first week, fourth, fifth day onwards you could detect IgM antibodies and, and 
IgM, suppose a patient had had an illness with the first virus sometime, then his IgG of the original would be present. So, you cannot be sure. IgG now, you know, so that is why one needs to show a fourfold rise of IgG after a second week or so. So, clinical course of dengue fever can be understood very easily by this. That is, a patient has high fever in the first few days, goes down, then can come up again. One can have dehydration during this phase, potential clinical course, or you can have during this, these days, he can have shock, he can have bleeding organs which need to be looked for, reabsorption, fluid overload can be there. So, you, you have to be careful as to how much fluid to be given. Hematocrit, which is high to start with, can come down, and the platelet levels which are there decreasing can also be, you know, it can be seen. The platelets here, the hematocrit here is going up, coming down, platelet levels are coming down, can rise again. Viremia is seen in the first week, febrile illness and the I, antibody starts forming in the IgM in this to start with and goes on to formation of IgG. Treatment, no specific treatment is there for treatment of dengue infection. Basically, you can give analgesics, pain relievers like uh, acetaminophen, avoid using ibuprofen, naproxen, aspirin or aspirin containing antibodies. One, can, one should take rest, drink plenty of fluids, prevent dehydration, avoid mosquito voids while febrile and consult a physician. No specific medication for DHF also. If a clinical diagnosis is made early, a healthcare provider can effectively treat DHF by giving fluid replacement therapy and adequate management will need hospitalization. Chikungunya virus, this virus first appeared in India in 1963 when along with dengue it caused very extensive epidemics in Calcutta, Madras and other areas. There is no animal reservoir for this virus, no vaccine is available. It is isolated in humans and Aedes aegypti, mosquitoes in Tanzania in 1952. Epidemics have occurred in African countries. In 1963 in India, Kolkata, Chennai, 1973 east coast of India and Maharashtra, 2006 Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka. In 2006, 15 and 16 we had in North India and West India epidemics of this uh, chikungunya virus. Now this chikungunya virus, it infects blood cells called monocytes during the early phase of infection. These monocytes, they harbor and transport the virus to the joints. They control the viral levels in the blood. They, from where they control the viral levels in the blood. The spread of the virus to the joints can cause chronic joint problems which may persist even after the first initial clearance of chikungunya virus infection from the blood. Clinically, patient will present with a biphasic fever with a period of remission after one to six days of fever. Crippling joint pains, lymphadenopathy, conjunctivitis and you can have maculopapular rash as you can see. Diagnosis is usually done by serodiagnosis that is you look for ELISA, you do ELISA for IgM or IgG antibodies. You can do RT-PCR that is uh, PCR can be done to detect the DNA, the molecule from the um, virus but no vaccine is available for chikungunya. Treatment, no vaccine is there or medicine to treat chikungunya per se. Treat the one is supposed to do symptomatic treatment that is you give plenty of rest, drink or drink lot of fluids to prevent dehydration, take medicines like acetaminophen or a paracetamol to reduce fever and pain, do not take aspirin or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, drugs because they can cause induced bleeding. If you are taking medicine for any other medical condition, one should talk to the healthcare provider and ask whether they can be taken or not. Prevention, if you have chikungunya, prevent mosquito bites for the first week of your illness. During the first week infection, chikungunya virus is present in the blood. So, it can be passed by a mosquito bite from the infected person to another person in the family. An infective virus can spread the virus to the people. So, that is the time when one can prevent and take care. Synthbis virus, on the other hand, it belongs to Toga viridi. It was originally isolated from Culex mosquitoes in 1952 in Synthbis district of Egypt. In India, antibodies have been detected but no association has been established with any human disease. That is, no human disease or human infection has been seen. Kaisnufur forest disease, this is another important disease which occurs in Kaisnufur forest in Shimoga district of Karnataka, which is seen, it was seen in 1957. Vector is Haemophysalis spinigera, which is a tick. It is episiotic, that is, it affects monkeys. Birds, small animals and ticks can act as reservoirs. Infection in monkeys is fatal, that is they act as amplifier host also. Incubation period is 3 to 7 days, fever of sudden onset, headache, vomiting, myalgia, conjunctivitis can be seen, man can have severe prostration, 
hemorrhages into the skin, viscera and mucosa can occur, gut, chest, cavity, epistaxis, etc. So, the diagnosis can is usually by getting samples from the tissues affected that is the blood sample, liver, brain biopsy or CSF. What you do is you do culture of these samples onto newborn mice that is intracerebral inoculation is done or mosquito cell lines or blood cells or you can detect presence of IgM in serum by ELISA or you can show IgG rising teeter of antibody in by ELISA. Treatment, no specific treatment for KFD is there. Early hospitalization and supportive therapy is important. Supportive, supportive therapy one means maintenance of hydration, usual precautions with bleeding disorders, blood when required, inactivated vaccine is available which can be given. Sandfly fever or papatasi fever, this is caused by genus flavovirus, fever is transmitted by bite of phlebotomus papatasi. It is also called phlebotomus or three day fever, occurs in Mediterranean countries and Central Asia including India, patient pre presents with fever, malaise, headache and nausea, they can last for 3 to 4 days, usually it is a non-fatal infection, out of the 20 uh, antigenic types, 5 antigenic types are known which can cause human disease. Rift Valley Fever, this is disease resembling influenza which is seen in humans, it is mosquito bone, it is enzootic hepatitis, causes enzootic hepatitis in sheep and domestic animals in Africa. But it can cause influenza like illness in humans, but usually not seen in India. Congo hemorrhagic fever, this is caused by genus Nairovirus. It is a member of Crimean Kumo Congo hemorrhagic group, which is pathogenic to humans. Disease is endemic in Eastern Europe, Central Africa, and Asia. It is caused through, it is the vector is hyaloma ticks. They occasionally cause man, uh, infect man, and cause mild febrile illness, which can be uh, responsible for this disease. Ganjam virus on the other hand can also cause disease but a mild fever like illness which has been seen in laboratory workers but are not a very common occurrence. Hunter virus, this is transmitted by rodents or roboviruses. Hunter virus, it is also known as hunter virus, Belgrade virus, Seol virus, Pumila virus, Muto canyon virus, it causes hemorrhagic fever and nephropathy. Hunter virus pulmonary syndrome in USA was discovered by Sin Nombre virus to be caused by sin number virus in 1993. Virus is shed in urine, feces and saliva of rodents by which the transmission can occur to human beings and other rodents. The hunter virus pulmonary syndrome, what does it comprise of? It is usually caused due to the acquired by inhalation of virus aerosols in dried rodent feces. Leads on to fever, malaise, malagia, myalgia and GI symptoms lasting for 3 to 4 days. Late stages patient may develop pulmonary edema. Severe cases he can have tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, hypoxia which may lead on to death. Diagnosis is usually by viral isolation that is the intracerebral inoculation of suckling nice or you can inoculate cell lines like Vero, E6, BHK21, EDS mosquito can be inoculated, mosquito line, cell lines can be inoculated to grow this virus and identify by doing tests later or you could look for antigen antibody detection that is IgM antibodies to start with and rising teeter of IgG antibodies they can be shown by ELISA, CFT or immunofluorescent test. Rio Viridi, four genera there, orthoreovirus, coltivirus, orbivirus and rotavirus. Only or orbivirus is arthropod one, it is a double stranded RNA virus, it causes colorado tick fever spread by wood tick, dermis interspecies which acts as a vector as well as Reservoir. It is a self-limiting disease usually which is produced by these. Rhabdoviruses which comprise Chandi virus genus vesiculovirus is isolated from blood of patients during, was isolated from blood of patients during dengue chikungunya epidemic in Nagpur in 1967. It is, the vector is sandfly and can be mosquito also. Exact pathogenic role is though not known, though it was isolated earlier but to now, till date not much know, is known about it. So, I think this is about all, basically this was to tell you that there are so many viral uh, illnesses which are prevalent due to the viruses which are present in our environment which are spread through uh, mosquito bites or tick bites and there are the arboviruses leading on to febrile illnesses, alone febrile illnesses or with hemorrhagic fevers, archalgia and complications. Thank you.